Assalamu alaikum students. Today we are going to study the properties of matter and in the properties of matter our uh, we will uh, understand the atmospheric pressure and that, that atmospheric pressure uh, we are going to explain the atmospheric pressure uh, describe the use of height of of a liquid column to measure the atmospheric pressure and uh, uh, we are going to discuss that the pressure decreases with the increase in height above the surface and explain why the changes in atmospheric pressure in the region may indicate a change in weather so first we are going to understand what is the atmospheric pressure so you all know that we have an air around us and the air also has weight and it occupies a space so this air it presses against everything it touches this pressure this air pressure around us it is called the atmospheric pressure or air pressure so it is the force exerted on the surface by the air above it as the gravity pulls it to the earth so this all uh, a, this is uh, air is pulled by the earth so it exerts pressure on every everything it touches so you can see that in this figure this is a column uh, the, the column of air above this surface x so the weight of the air in the column applies a uh, pressure to this point x this is taken as a unit area so we can define atmospheric pressure as the force per unit area exerted against the surface by the weight of the air above the surface so this is what the atmospheric pressure is so why don't we feel the atmospheric pressure because uh, uh, so atmospheric pressure is a uh, also is applied it uh, apply a pressure on our body too but that our internal pressure of the lungs and the blood that cancels its effect so that's why we do not feel the atmospheric pressure and uh, uh, then how we know the presence of the atmospheric pressure this can be done by a very simple experiment it this experiment was done by uh, a scientist uh, by sure and he showed that okay, that the uh, and it he take a hemisphere and it is hemisphere is uh, uh, can be uh, broken up into two parts so he showed that when there is no uh, air inside that uh, hemisphere the horses cannot pull them apart and if there is an air even a human can pull it apart so he showed that there is a pressure in the air air exerts a pressure on everything it touches now this can be explained by this by with this simple experiment um, you can take the empty can or you know that empty can is not crushed and you are going to remove the lid and put some water in the empty can and put it on the uh, he, uh, burn, burner just to uh, boil the water when the water is start, start boiling so uh, the steam uh, take expels the air from this area out and this whole area is occupied by the steam so when the, the is uh, well just give a few minutes so that the air all the air is expelled out and whole this space is filled with the steam then uh, turn off the burner and put the lid now put that can into a cold or in a tap water so the the steam will convert back condensed to water convert back to water and leaving nothing over here it means there is a vacuum in this side so the atmospheric the scan will crushed like this uh, that shows that since there is no uh, Uh, air inside that there is a vacuum so no air means no pressure so the pressure are uh, there must be some pressure outside that crush the can so you can see that this is uh, shows us the presence of the atmospheric pressure you can also do this experiment uh, just to uh, uh, know that uh, how the atmospheric pressure acts on it now they see this movie ke how uh, in the older old 
older in the old age how the uh, they discovered the atmospheric pressure Previously said nature fears of empty space when he claimed that a true vacuum a space devoid of matter could not exist because the surrounding matter would immediately fill it fortunately he turned out to be wrong a vacuum is a key component of the barometer an instrument for measuring air pressure and because air pressure correlates to temperature and rapid shifts in it can contribute to hurricanes tornadoes and other extreme weather events a barometer is one of the most essential tools for weather forecasters and scientists alike how does a barometer work and how is it invented well it took a while because the theory of aristotle and other ancient philosophers regarding the impossibility of a vacuum seemed to hold true in everyday life few seriously thought to question it for nearly 2000 years until necessity raised the issue in the early 17th century italian miners faced a serious problem when they found that their pumps could not raise water more than 10.3 meters high some scientists of the time including one galileo galilei proposed that sucking air out of the pipe was what made water rise to replace the void but that its force was limited and could lift no more than 10.3 meters of water however the idea of a vacuum existing at all was still considered controversial and the excitement over galileo's unorthodox theory led gasparo berti to conduct a simple but brilliant experiment to demonstrate that it was possible a long tube was filled with water and placed standing in a shallow pool with both ends plugged the bottom end of the tube was then opened and water poured out into the basin until the level of the water remaining in the tube was 10.3 meters with a gap remaining at the top and no air having entered the tube berti had succeeded in directly creating a stable vacuum but even though the possibility of a vacuum had been demonstrated not everyone was satisfied with galileo's idea that this empty void was exerting some mysterious yet finite force on the water evangelista torricelli galileo's young pupil and friend decided to look at the problem from a different angle instead of focusing on the empty space inside the tube he asked himself what else could be influencing the water because the only thing in contact with the water was the air surrounding the pool he believed the pressure from this air could be the only thing preventing the water level in the tube from dropping further he realized that the experiment was not only a tool to create a vacuum but operated as a balance between the atmospheric pressure on the water outside the tube and the pressure from the water column inside the tube the water level in the tube decreases until the two pressures are equal which just happens to be when the water is at 10.3 meters this idea was not easily accepted as galileo and others had traditionally thought that atmospheric air has no weight and exerts no pressure torricelli decided to repeat berti's experiment with mercury instead of water because mercury was denser it fell farther than the water and the mercury column stood only about 76 cm tall not only did this allow torricelli to make the instrument much more compact it supported his idea that weight was the deciding factor a variation on the experiment used two tubes with one having a large bubble at the top if galileo's interpretation had been correct the bigger vacuum in the second tube should have exerted more suction and lifted the mercury higher but the level in both tubes was the same the ultimate support for torricelli's theory came via blaise pascal who had such a mercury tube taken up a mountain and showed that the mercury level dropped as the atmospheric pressure decreased with altitude mercury barometers based on torricelli's original model remained one of the most common ways to measure atmospheric pressure and so this movie shows you there is a uh, instrument that is called a mercury barometer that is used to uh, measure the atmospheric pressure and you have already seen that how this is invented and uh, what problems they face uh, for this invention finally they come to the idea of a vacuum and uh, uh, this length of the column that is remain same on the earth or Uh, it uh, decreases or increases with the altitude so first we are going to see what a simple barometer is uh, uh, atmospheric 
pressure can be measured by a simple barometer. It is a thick glass tube, at least one meter long. is filled with mercury completely. And why we use mercury is that because it is the densest liquid, uh, and uh, it uh, uh, make it visible so that the length of the mercury column will remain small. If we use uh, water, uh, because water density is lesser, it is only one grams uh, per cubic centimeter. So a very very long tube is needed to uh, uh, to uh, for this for uh, atmospheric pressure. Now. The open end of mercury tube is covered with a finger and inverted in a trough for mercury. The height of the mercury is proportional to the atmospheric pressure. We have already seen when the atmospheric pressure and the uh, length of this mercury column that is uh, uh, exerting a pressure on this, when they both are equal, the length will not further decrease. So when they are equal, so it means the length of the column shows as the uh, atmospheric pressure at that time. The height of the mercury is proportional to the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure supports the column of mercury inside the tube. So inside pressure and when inside pressure and outside pressure equals, so the, at the length at that time of the mercury column shows what is the atmospheric pressure outside. Okay, now you can see the characteristic of barometers. The height of the mercury remains the same even though the glass tube is uh, lifted up or lowered down. Like this, if it is lowered down to the bottom, the length of the mercury column and where what could be the length of the mercury column from the surface of the trough till the line, till where the mercury column ends. And this above space may contain some mercury vapors, but they are, uh, there is no air inside that. So. Uh, you can see that whether it is lifted up or it is uh, uh, lowered down or we use a, a, a test tube with a, a more greater diameter or we even wait till that tube. The, it is experimentally found where whatever is done but the length of the mercury column at the sea level that remains the same that is 760 mm of mercury. Uh, that is your, uh, because we are using the mercury, so we are going to define the atmospheric pressure as 760 mm of mercury. The height of the mercury column remains same even though the diameter of the tube is different. The vertical height remains the same even though the glass tube is slanted. So it should be slanted such that this open ends. Uh, they do not come out of the mercury. So it is found that whatever is done, it is the length of the mercury column always remain the same, that is 760 of mercury. Okay, now the next question is that uh, why atmospheric pressure decreases as we go higher above the Earth's surface? Uh, we know that what, what we have defined earlier, that atmospheric pressure is the weight of the air that it exerts uh, downwards. Or we can say that the density decreases, so the mass decreases, mass decreases, so the weight of the air decreases. So when the weight of the air decreases, it means the pressure also decreases. So the atmospheric pressure decreases as the height because we know that as we go up, there is lesser air. Uh, this is because the altitude increases, the number of air molecules decreases. The uh, it means the density decreases, the weight of the air decreases, as the, uh, this, there is a less air above the surface, so the weight and the number of molecules decreases. This is why aircraft that fly high altitude must be pressurized, must be pressurized. If the air pressure is too low, human cannot take in oxygen quickly enough to meet their body need. Uh, now, since you can see that this is, uh, we have the high pressure at the sea level, and as we go uh, high above uh, the, uh, uh, or the altitude increases, the air pressure decreases. Since more than half of the atmosphere molecules are located below the altitude of 5.5 kilometers, atmospheric pressure decreases roughly 50% within the lowest 5.5 kilometer. Above 5.5 kilometer, the pressure continues to decrease, but at 
at an increasingly slower rate means that uh, there it decreases but at uh, decreases at a very slower rate so you can see that uh, this is the uh, view of at the sea level uh, we have more density so the weight of the air is more so the atmospheric pressure is greater at the sea level that is 1 atm or 760 of mercury and in pounds per square inch it is 14.7 pounds per square inch uh, so uh, this is very high as we go above the altitude the uh, number of molecules decreases so the density decreases and the weight of the air decreases and since so the weight decreases so it exerts lesser pressure on anything that touches it so uh, this is the uh, atmospheric pressure uh, atmospheric pressure uh, may also indicate a change in weather you must have heard in the news when there is a monsoon season or okay, there is a low pressure in the rajasthan sector or severe uh, there in the this area so we are going to experience a low pressure in here and we are having a uh, uh, rain uh, uh, we have much more rain than the previous year so the atmospheric pressure plays a very uh, important part uh, so that uh, we can predict about the weather so on a hot day the air above the uh, earth become hot and expands this cause fall in atmospheric pressure in that region on the other hand during the cold chilly nights the air above the earth cools down and this causes an increase in atmospheric pressure so what happened if we have a uh, we see that the at, there is a gradual and average drop in atmospheric pressure it means a low pressure in the neighboring locality minor but rapid fall in atmospheric pressure indicates the windy and showery condition a decrease in atmospheric pressure is accompanied by breeze and rain a sudden fall in atmospheric pressure followed by storm and typhoons a gradual and a large increase in atmospheric pressure indicates a long spell of pleasant weather rapid increase in atmospheric pressure means soon it will be followed by decrease in atmospheric pressure indicating poor uh, weather ahead so the atmospheric pressure uh, indicates a change in weather we can predict the weather now uh since uh, these are uh, uh, their atmospheric pressure uh, we, is exerting on everything so uh, we are uh, what are the applications of the atmospheric pressure so we are using the rubber suckers uh, the rubber suckers are those uh, you, we are uh, used to just hang hang anything on it uh, a lighter weight uh, any uh, lighter weight objects so how it works we see that when the rubber sucker is put on to a smooth surface usually a glass or tile surface uh, the in the air in this area it is uh, pressed and it is forced to uh, uh, forced out this causes the space between the surface and sucker to have a low pressure so the atmospheric pressure from the outside is greater the outer pressure is more than the inner inner pressure so the Uh, this uh, rubber sucker uh, is uh, is stuck is uh, uh, is smooth, uh, stuck to the wall or anything very firmly. So this is the syringe. How the syringe operates? When the piston is pull up, the atmospheric pressure inside the cylinder will decrease. the atmospheric pressure outside so this atmospheric pressure that is uh, acting outside and there is a decrease in pressure in the inside so it pushes the liquid up into the syringe so these are the two application and we will discuss more application that drinking by straw is also an application of that atmospheric pressure uh, when we, uh, we suck the straw this causes the pressure in the straw to decrease so the atmospheric pressure is more than the pressure in the inside the straw so it acts on the liquid and uh, water in the glass causing it to rise through the straw now there is one more application we are using that is your vacuum cleaner the vacuum cleaner uh, also applies the principle of atmospheric pressure to remove dust particles uh, the fan sucks out the air so as you can see that is a this is there is a fan that sucks out the air from inside uh, 
creating a partial low pressure over here since the air is sucked out so there is a lower pressure over there so the atmospheric pressure that is outside it is more than the inside so the atmosphere which uh, the force which this forces the air and the dust particle into the filter bag this traps the dust and particle but allows the air to flow through and exit at the back so this is how the vacuum cleaner operates and there is a siphon uh, the rubber tubes uh, can be used as a siphon liquid from a container at a higher level to another at a lower level the tube is first filled with the liquid this tube is should be filled with the liquid and one end is placed in the liquid in this container the other end is placed over here so the pressure in the rubber tube at the lower end is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to uh, height column of the liquid at the pressure at the lower end is greater than the atmospheric pressure so the liquid flows out to this so it fell over this but the uh, this can the, the liquid in this can should be uh, level is should be more than this uh, container level so these are the few application of your uh, atmospheric pressure that we are using them so thank you and we are going to learn more about the uh, properties of matter in the next lectures thank you and allah peace